<laughs> Good evening, everybody. Jay Kladek here. I uh, wanted to give you a update on progress I'm making with my uh, Knight Rider build, 124 scale. For those of you that may not have seen the previous video, essentially what I'm doing is I'm combining chassis and many bits from a uh, AMT Ertl 91 Pontiac Firebird GTA with some uh, leftover bits from a vintage MPC Knight Rider kit. Actually I've got the remains of about two cars in the box plus also I'm using some other bits from the uh, 2006 vintage AMT Knight Rider kit mainly because that kit has its parts molded in gray plastic and I will explain in a little bit why I'm using that particular one. Uh, what you see in front of you doesn't look like I know it doesn't look like I made a lot of uh, progress well yes and no uh, but as you can see I've got a scanner eye mounted it is the Aoshima scanner eye that uh, they both offer with some of their Knight Rider kits and also that they make available separately. Okay, you got the hood removed here. Now what you can see here is this is the circuit for the uh, scanner eye that Aoshima did for their Knight Rider kits. And as you can see I've adapted it into the uh, chassis of the AM MPC AMT Firebird slash Knight Rider kits. Uh, the circuit was originally designed for a 124 scale model and with the MPC kit being 125th scale had to make some modifications to get it to fit. Uh, so one of the things I did, you can kind of see it here, I actually used a cutoff wheel to grind back some of the material on either side of the circuit. Plus I also did similar grinding to the inside of the uh, wheel fender wells under the hood. Of course it means that I'm not really going to be able to mount much in the way of any engine detail or anything like that, but once the hood goes on and I've got a micro crystal cleared down, this car is going to essentially be a curbside anyway. Curbside meaning you're going to have full interior detail, but you're not really going to have any engine detail under the hood with a liftoff hood or anything like that. Now. If I do this right on the bottom, the uh, the full chassis detail will still be there, but I uh, had to make some compromises to get it to work. Now if I was just doing the scanner eye, that would be the end of it, but I'm going a bit more ambitious than that. Uh, what I mean by that is, in addition to the scanner eye, I'm also mounting both the speaker and the circuit board from the 2013 Hallmark Knight Rider ornament and I'm going to mount those in there so that when I press a button you can actually hear a uh, sound bite from the television show with William Daniels going I am the voice of the Knight Industries 2000 KITT for short or KIT if you prefer and that's the only sound bite it's got but that's all it really needs and that's how big the circuit is it is powered by 3 volts, just like what the uh, circuit on the Aoshima light board is. And I'm trying to combine everything into a single battery power source so that I can power it with a uh, CR2 battery, which is a 3 volt, three volt battery with a bit more milliamp capacity than uh, what the LR44 batteries have. If it was just the uh, the nose that I was powering up, the LR44s would work fine. But with the LEDs I want to mount under the hood and the speaker that I want to mount, I'm a little afraid that I might be running out of power. So that's why I'm going this route. Of course, mounting these guys, this is the speaker, this is the circuit board, and this is the battery, means that I've got quite a few challenges ahead of me trying to mount all this stuff. I have done test fits though. I've got a configuration which I think is going to work and if I can get everything to fit just like I want it that's going to be pretty danged impressive. 
Now, before I talk about the electronics I'm going to cram in there, let me uh, talk briefly about one of the modifications I have done to the body. If you recall from my uh, video discussing the history of the Knight Rider kits, the bodies that you currently get in the MPC kit do not have the little prominently featured vent slash grill detail on the uh, on the front fenders. The original Knight Rider bodies did feature that, but over time as they retooled it for both the Firebird GTA, which is what I'm converting, and the Turbo Firebird, which is what this body is for, and which is the body that's available in the current kit, they uh, lost that detailing. So, thankfully I did have some uh, pieces parts left over from a couple of my older Knight Rider projects that I built back in grade school. And so I had some louver vents that I could transfer. It was very easy to do uh, if you got the right tools for it. Basically, you either need a pin vise or uh, some or some good cutting implements such as razor saws and stuff. Best device I found for doing it is actually like a uh, mini uh, cordless Dremel rotary tool. But anyway, the, ch the, the challenge being getting these vents to fit into this body. And the trick here is making sure that you not only get the parts out of there, but also make sure that they line up perfectly. So what I did for that was uh, before I did any cutting, I put pieces of uh, tape on the sides of the body of, with the vents that I was transferring and marked it off with a pen and actually even made some cuts there using common details that you're going to find on both bodies, basically the, uh, the door shut lines. And once I had those templates made, basically transferred them over to the uh, to the body that was going to receive the donor parts and drew on the uh, images as to where the vents would go. Then I made the cuts. Next, once I was done, I basically used the Dremel rotary tool to cut out those little vents and trimmed them down and sanded them down. Then I transferred them over. It took a bit of work to make sure that the holes were cut properly, but that's the reason why I had the uh, the little guides right here that, that I made. And, as you can see, voila, I got them on both sides. Now, in my case, since I actually had an even more trash body than this one, which I was able to use for the donor vents, this one actually served as more of a guide. Now, if you've only got two bodies, specifically your donor body, and your recipient body, I highly, highly recommend doing the modifications to this body first before you cut the vents out because otherwise if you cut the vents out of this first and somehow your uh, tape masks get pulled off, you're not going to know exactly where those go. So just be careful when you're doing it. But it was very easy to do. Uh, glued, on, glued in the vents with plastic weld glue. They're in there nice and rock hard. Um, one of the vents may end up becoming the switch for the voice modulator, although I don't know, at that angle might be a little tough. Plus also I don't know if I want to risk encouraging people to put fingerprints on one side of a perfectly painted body. So I may revisit that idea and actually mount the, uh, the push button switch elsewhere. But, that's what I did. So now I've got a Knight Rider body with uh, the, uh, the door ding strip and the vent. Now as you can see, some of the parts on this body are black, are, uh, black molded. Those are some bits that I was able to scrounge off of this body. I wasn't able to get everything though, so I'm actually having to use some Knight Rider pieces from my 2006 Knight Rider kit, such as the rear bumper. But, uh, of course, there's another reason I'm using that uh, 2006 vintage Knight Rider kit with the gray parts, as I'll explain in a moment. Okay, I'd like to take a moment to talk briefly about the 
interiors on the uh, on the Firebird kits. This is something I didn't talk about in my uh, kit comparison, mainly because I was focused on the exterior bits on the body. But there are some changes that have that occurred to the interior tubs at the same time that the uh, exterior mods were taking place. What you've got on this side is an original 1982 interior uh, as it was molded, and that I was able to successfully scrounge one of these out of my old one of my old project cars. The one you have on this side uh, came out of the 91 Firebird, but this interior tub is the same as what's on the latest reissue MPC kits plus the 2006 AMT Ertl Knight Rider issue. And don't know how well you can make it out, but there are some minor cosmetic changes that were done to the seats and stuff. Um, but probably most importantly, the center console area on both interior tubs did change shape a little. And as a result, if you are using one of these newer tubs, the little uh, switch box that goes just behind the uh, the stick shift doesn't uh, doesn't fit quite right unless you make a cut in the back and cut it flush then you can get that box to fit right the rest of the interior I wouldn't really worry so much about uh, concerning the differences mainly because when you put the dashboard on front here it's going to cover up these areas right here and the rear seats you're not really going to see very much. The front seats are going to be the primary thing that a lot of people are going to see. The uh, the door cards are also just a hair different, but not really enough to cause any problems. But just be aware that you probably will have to do that. I mean, all you have to do is just cut a little notch in there and cut it flush to about where the, uh, the floor of the stick shift gate is. And then that console should be able to fit in there quite nicely. Now... Uh, one of my other Knight Rider kits does have an interior console that's a little different from both of these, and I believe that was the 87, possibly the 88 vintage interior, but everything still fits nice because uh, they hadn't really made the major, major modifications to the center console yet. Okay, yeah, you do see a couple of buttons for the uh, for the windows prominently displayed on that middle production console, but they didn't actually alter the shape like they did with this one. Now, this is your stock uh, Firebird dashboard right here. This is an original Knight Rider dash. And this right here is the dashboard that I am using, which is from the 2006 uh, Knight Rider kit because it's molded in gray. Now, one of the things I was never, never crazy about when I uh, built the Knight Rider kits back in the day was it always seemed like that dashboard just protruded way too far into the passenger cabin because these little display screens almost completely covered up the stick shift. Now it does appear that there was a method to the madness of MPC at the time because the stock length of this piece that the dashboard fits onto is about the same as the dashboard that you find on a stock Firebird. And I think the reason for that was is because since the production company was uh, modifying stock Firebird Trans Ams as they got them from Pontiac, they needed to stick something in there as a stunt console, and so they probably just put an overlay in there just to get it to work. But... I think for the uh, for the hero cars with a dashboard that would either work or kind of looked better, it looks like the uh, the dashboard was actually more of a uh, more of a modified fit. And I took my uh, Aoshima kit and checked the dashboard on that, and discovered the length of the MPC dashboard was about four millimeters longer than the length of the Aoshima dashboard. That's length from front to rear. Width-wise, yeah, the Aoshima kit obviously has a wider dashboard from left to right because it's a 124 scale model. But as but when the scale when the distances get smaller, things are closer. 
So what I did was I actually measured out an area and made the cuts. So I cut basically a four millimeter wedge out of the stock dash portion. Pretty much where I made the cuts is right just ahead of these notches here that uh, go into the floorboard area. And cleaned it up, used a little strip siren to make sure everything fit right and drop it into the interior and it looks right. So the so the uh, stick shift is no longer covered and if Michael Knight has to eject he doesn't have to worry about his legs getting chopped off. <laughs> well now we get to the real meat of the situation as to what I am trying to do. Now when I first started this project I thought well there'd be plenty of room to fit everything into the model the way I wanted to do it and keep everything self-contained including the battery source. Well, it's been a little more complicated than that. The uh, circuit board of course that uh, fits under the hood it pretty much takes up almost the entire engine bay um, left to right. And there's not really any room to fit much in the way behind it. That wouldn't be really a problem if I'm just doing the nose circuit but I want to actually do uh, some dashboard lights, uh, mainly because you've got those really nice decals that uh, MPC offers on the current Knight Rider kit. And secondly, and, and at the same time too, I also want to mount the speaker and this little circuit right here so I can get those hallmark uh, sound effects from the, uh, from the 2013 ornament. Well, the beauty of it is, is the circuit board itself it is so small that it looks like I can probably fit it up under the dashboard without any problems on this side. And then on this side I can mount a couple of additional LEDs which will be powered by the battery source which I'm going to fit the uh, CR2 battery source. But the uh, speaker became a bit more of a challenge because, well, it's kind of big. I couldn't really fit it above the circuit board, not unless I chopped the uh, the little uh, battery posts off and I was reluctant to want to do that mainly because I didn't want to run the risk of damaging the circuit. What I'm going to do to power the light circuit is I'm going to make a couple like little battery blanks out of plastic except one side is going to be metal. I'm going to have one for the negative side, one for the positive side and that way they can all be powered by a separate battery source. Uh, the speaker here was a bit more of a challenge so what I ended up doing was in the chassis area I carved as much material as I could out of the aft section where the fuel tank uh, normally sits. MPC molded these things very very thick and I almost got to the point where it was transparent before the uh, speaker box would drop in there. Originally I wanted to try to carve out enough material so I'd have the speaker pointing downward but the speaker doesn't fit perfectly flat and it causes problems so it's going to be going upwards. Drilled these little holes into the uh, rear cargo deck and what I'm going to do to obscure those holes is I'm actually going to put a Pontiac style cargo cover back there. There'd still be openings to allow sound to transmit and as a result when I hit the button theoretically I'm hoping that the, uh, that the rear deck of the car will actually transmit the sound forward and actually make the car, make, make uh, the sound of Kit's voice come sound like it's coming from the interior dashboard area. That's the plan anyway. So hopefully it'll work. Now the main reason why I'm using the 2006 dashboard is because it is molded in gray. You can actually get light to pass through it a lot easier than you can get light to pass through black. Light simply won't pass through black plastic whatsoever. But even then I had to make some modifications there as well. So I took my little Dremel Moto tool with a grinding tip and basically carved and carved and carved until the plastic was almost totally transparent but still projecting light and well almost punched through in a couple areas but it looks like it's going to work so I can get some of that Raytheon glow to diffuse the lighting really nice. And so 
I could probably get away with three, maybe four little, little tiny LEDs. And the final thing I'm going to do, I actually carved out the area where the, uh, the voice modulator goes because I'm mounting an LED in there. It's probably going to be one of these little red LEDs that I'm getting off the, uh, the Hallmark circuit. These were used for the flashing light effect in the nose, but they're not going to do anything on this one. And so I'll mount that LED between the uh, signal wires of the speaker so that the voltage going to the speaker will cause that center LED to flicker. It's a little technique I picked up uh, from Boyd and actually did some test runs with it before the speaker wires broke. These are very brittle wires, by the way. And, well, it works. It looks like it's going to work really, really nice. So that'll give the model a nice level of interaction for the, uh, for the people to look at when it's on display. Now, where am I going to mount this little battery? What I've managed to do was I've cut out an area here where the back of the engine block goes. And a CR2 battery uh, mounted between the uh, the lower engine mount and the front part of the the tub back here looks it looks like it'll drop fit in I just have to build build up a structure that kinda looks like the belly of an engine or the belly of a transmission is more like it and kinda make it look more like maybe a turbine engine as opposed to an internal combustion engine then I'll make some sort of a detail plate to obscure the areas on the front here um, I may mount another power switch to power everything and then I can probably just cover up over this switch and then when I hit then when I hit the power switch everything will be powered up except for the voice modulator which won't fire until I actually hit the switch which I'm probably going to mount on the floorboard right there well so anyway that's uh, where I currently am and part of the reason I'm shooting this video right now is because my work to the body is essentially done. All I've got to really do is maybe mount the uh, the rear uh, wing. And I'm basically going to take the body into the paint shop. I'll still have another body that I can use basically as a, as a fit check vehicle. And that way I can move on with the uh, mount, permanent mounting of the electronics. And next time the, uh, the body and the interior and the chassis get together will be during the uh, the final assembly. Um, but anyway, the one thing I can definitely pass along is yes, you can get the Aoshima circuit to fit into an MPC kit if you so desire. Modifying the body is not really that tough and basically the modifications I am doing will work just fine with a uh, one of the black molded recent MPC Knight Rider kits if you can get your hands on a uh, trash donor body from an earlier Firebird to scrounge bits from. And as I said, the only reason I'm really using that 91 Firebird body is because it's part of the constraint of a model contest I'm trying to get it done for. But at the same time, too, you can see the modifications I'm doing a lot more easily on gray plastic than on black. Now, if you do want to light the uh, the dashboard on one of the black molded Knight Rider cars and don't have an access don't have access to a AMT Earl one molded in gray, you can still do it. But basically, you just have to chop these panels out here and replace them with uh, white or even clear frosted uh, sheet styrene. Um, thankfully, since I had access to this, I was able to do the modifications without having to cut completely through and well, hopefully you save a little work that way. But this is where I'm at. If all goes well, maybe I'll have this thing done in a little over a week. <laughs> Every time I say that though, I always blow my time estimate completely out of the water. But I do have to get this done very soon, not just for that contest at the end of the month, but also for uh, because I have to make room and work on another project for a book publication coming out sometime next year and it's a deadline that I cannot 
that I cannot let slip. Otherwise, I'll probably never have a similar opportunity ever again to do anything like that. But, anyway, that's where I'm at. Hope you found this informative, and good luck with your projects, and thank you for watching.